What's up YouTube? Steven here with Steven's Best Loop coming at you with another video. Today we are talking about what is the right size silver bar to buy. Uh, made a little stack of silver bars here just for fun, uh, but we're going to go start going through these and see what you guys think is the best size bar to buy. So to start with, we're going to talk about 100 ounce bars. These are generally the biggest bar you're going to see in any private collection. They do make thousand ounce Comex bars and stuff like that, but most people aren't investing in that sort of thing. Uh, the biggest bar they will pick up is a hundred ouncer. This is a beautiful gold standard bar made by Inglehard. Uh, here for an example, we also have a, uh, a Academy poured hundred ounce bar and a Degusa poured a 100 ounce bar just to give you guys a little bit of variety of some 100 ounces you may not have seen before. Um, so the pros and cons of a 100 ounce bar. One of the big misconceptions I hear a lot is people say, hey, if you have a 100 ounce bar and silver goes up to $50, $100, whatever per ounce, whatever crazy prices in the moon, uh, your local coin shop will not be able to buy the 100 ounce bar. They won't have enough money, so don't stack that size. Um, first off, I'd like to say in the majority of the cases, that is not true. Your local coin shop is doing way, way more volume than you guys realize. Um, they're buying, you know, dozens, if not, uh, hundreds of one ounce gold Eagles at a time, uh, from their wholesalers and putting those in and out. Now there may be some smaller coin shops that, you know, don't do that kind of volume, but for the most part in the bullion business, the margins are pretty low. And so you got to move a lot of weight uh, to really make your money. And if you're making enough money to afford a coin shop, um, you, you're going to be able to buy a 100 ounce bar no matter what silver's at. Um, also, most coin shops, if they are buying something that is a little bit of a stretch for them financially, they will pre-sell that to their wholesaler. Um, so for instance, uh, I have a buddy that owns a coin shop up here. And they recently bought nine of those thousand ounce Comex bars I was telling you about um, before they even wrote the guy a check. They had already put in a call to their wholesaler and sold the bars. So they're in and out um, before they ever sit in their inventory. So if we did get to a time where one of these bars was costing a hundred thousand dollars or something crazy like that, um, your coin shop would be able to buy it now. The biggest pro I would say with a 100 ounce bar is you generally get lower premium. Um, even on the more collector stuff like this gold standard bar here, you're going to pay a lot less per ounce for a 100 ounce uh, rare bar than you would a 10 ounce rare bar um, just because there's so much silver in it. So uh, if you got the money to spend on a 100 ounce silver, um, these are generally going to be one of your better buys. Now, the con going along with that would be um, you are buying a hundred ounces of silver at once so if you're an investor that can't uh, you know that maybe you're gonna buy a hundred ounces a year um, you're much better off generally cost averaging that and buying over time with smaller pieces um, than spending it all at once because you might buy this hundred ounce or that one week of the year where silver is the most expensive it is all year long and then you're just always underwater on that bar um, so cost averaging is important. If you're trying to buy a hundred ounces a week, then a hundred ounces definitely are in play for you. Uh, maybe even if you're buying a hundred ounce a month, but if you're only going to be able to afford a hundred ounce or every six months or a year, uh, then I would probably buy smaller bars and pay that little bit higher premium. Uh, next size up, I only brought out two examples, uh, but I have more. I uh, brought out some uh, Johnson Mathy kilos. Um, so the next size down from the 100 ounce or the most common one, uh, there are 50 ounces and other other sizes, but the next common one would be the kilo. Um, we got a couple Johnson Mathy SLC stamp kilos here. Uh, these were made from the original Johnson Mathy. This one actually has a nice little double imprint on it. Um, so a kilo is a great size of silver for your average buyer. Um, right now, kilos have kind of a crazy premium because you know silver in general has crazy premiums, but generally um, these are going to get you at a little bit better silver rate than a 10-ouncer, but not quite as good as a 100-ouncer. 
Um, there are some cool rare kilos out there too, Johnson Matthey, Inglehards. Um, there's some premium uh, kilos, you know, your Geigers, your Pamp Swiss, stuff like that. Um, but uh, kilo is a great size to stack. Um, the, the biggest pro I would say is that you're getting a good amount of silver um, in, in a price that a lot of people could, you know, afford for a monthly investment, um, which, which is a good amount to buy every month. Um, the biggest con, uh, I would put to a kilo is, you know, there, there's not a lot to break up here. Um, same kind of thing with the hundred ouncer. Uh, there's not a lot to break up. So if you did want to sell some of your silver, uh, you don't really, you know, you can't really chop this kilo in half. Um, so if this is your whole silver stack, you are letting go of the entire kilo if you need to get some money out of your investment. Uh, next size, I grabbed a few of them here for you, is 10 ounces. Uh, I got all sorts of different ones here. We got some Wall Street Mint, some uh, Arger Harris National. Uh, I think I grabbed some Engelhards mixed in here somewhere. Um, 10 ounce bars. This is probably the most common and most popular size of silver bullion out there. Um, you will see 10 ounce bars generally in every coin shop. Uh, every bullion store, every bullion site um, usually has 10 ounces in stock. Right now is a little bit of a weird time, so you're not seeing them nearly as much, but it's a great size, affordable for most people, uh, small enough that you wouldn't you know, kill yourself if you had to sell one of them because you needed some money. Um, so really takes care of a lot of the pros and cons uh, from some of the bigger bars. But the one thing you run into with as you get smaller and smaller size in silver is higher premium, right? So in most places, uh, if you bought 10 10 ounce bars, you're gonna be paying a little bit more than if you bought a 100 ounce bar. Um, so it just depends. And then uh, there is a lot more collector 10 ounce bars, such as these Inglehards and other ones that'll carry additional premiums. If you're looking to just get silver weight, uh, I would stick to Stuff that looks more like this Amark here, uh, nice generic brand, Sunshine Mint, Silvertown, uh, any of those you'll get a lot cheaper price uh, generally than an Inglehard, Johnson Matthey, things like that. Unless you want to collect those, some great American companies with some cool history and some just great looking products. I mean, look at that 10 ouncer there, beautiful. Uh, next size up. We got five ounces. Five ounce silver bar, very similar to the 10 ounce as far as pros and cons. Uh, there is definitely collectible ones, Johnson Matthews, Inglehards. Uh, this, sorry, this was a 10 ounce or snuck in there. It's size more like a, a five ouncer, but let me put that back over in the 10 ounce bucket here. Um, Nice thing about five ounce bars is they are a little more compact and a little cheaper obviously than a 10 ounce bar, uh, running you about half the price. So it's a more affordable piece of silver that more people could potentially purchase. Um, however, same downside, you're generally gonna pay a little bit more for two five ounces than you would for one 10 ounce. So as we continue to go down the ladder here, uh, price is really, you know, one of the biggest increases, um, but you're still gonna generally pay less for a five ounce bar than you will for five one ounce bars. So it continues to have uh, that positive outlook to it. Um, you're, there are different collector ones um, as we talked about, but you're probably not gonna get any super crazy premium on any five ounces unless it's that really rare Inglehard pour uh, or something like that. Mostly you're going to find generics at your shops like the Sunshine Mint here, uh, which you should be able to get for a pretty good price. And then the last size I grabbed for you guys, one ounce silver bars. Uh, I grabbed a special one because uh, this one just came out and it is a very pretty bar, so I wanted to show it off. Um, one ounce silver bars. Now this here is the 2021 Perth Dragon Bar, uh, which is also a government minted coin. Um, 
So this is good for one dollar in Australia, but please don't turn it in for one dollar. <laughs> um, real nice coin. Got some frosted, uh, frosted background. Got the the dragon artwork on it. Uh, so for one ounce bars in the bar category, these are going to be your highest premium. Um, however. Um, with that being the con, I would say one of the biggest pros is you have a lot more liquidity with a one ounce bar and you're able to get a lot more premium out of it. Um, something like these Dragon Bars sell in the $40 to $50 range, uh, especially the, the last ones in the series. And you will be hard pressed to find a 100 ouncer that you'll be able to get $40 an ounce for. So you're going to pay more premium up front, um, but since it's a smaller price tag, um, a lot of the series is of the bars and the rare bars. There's a lot more collectors uh, Therefore a lot more collectors means the uh, supply and demand can drive the price of that piece up a little bit more um, So one ounce bars definitely have a pro there. You're gonna pay more up front um, But as long as you're not selling it to a shop or a pawn shop or somewhere that's gonna give you just melt value on it You're generally gonna get a little bit more money out um, with one ounce bars too a lot of times you can buy them in tube, uh, like here's some sealed tubes of the Perth bars um, with, I believe, 20 in each of these tubes. Um, so you can kind of buy in bulk to get additional weight. Now, you are going to be paying a lot more per ounce um, for the price of this tube um, and versus what you would pay for two 10-ounce bars. You're going to be probably paying about... Uh, a couple hundred dollars uh, at least more uh, to get these Perth. But once again, uh, if your plan, if your plan when you liquidate your metals is to sell them private party out into the open market, um, a lot more customers will be able to afford a forty dollar Perth Dragon Bar and think it's cool enough to spend their money on and go ahead and buy. Um, then they are going to be able to purchase a 100 ounce gold standard bar. So um, how you're gonna liquidate matters as well as what your ultimate end goal is and how much you can invest. So the long and short of it is no matter what bar you buy, as long as you're investing in silver, um, you're doing something to help secure your financial wealth in the future. What bar is correct for you really depends on how much you have to spend and how you plan on liquidating them down the road. Um, that was it for me, guys. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm also very active on Instagram. That's where I put out the majority of my content, so check me out on there, at Stevens Best Loot. Uh, also, I have a TikTok and all pretty much every other social media. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out some of the cool silver bars and some of the information, and I'll see you guys later.